Good morning, Wesley, and all who join us on this glorious day. If you've not already done so, please take a moment and register your attendance. Please let us know you're here. We want to keep up with you. We also want to be praying for those you are praying for. So when you finish that registration, just slide on over to the next little block there that says prayer requests. Fill out that form for those that you want us to pray for, uh, and we will join you in prayer. Also, if you are so inclined and wish to give back to God, you can use our online giving platform also there in the website. Uh, you can bring a check by, you can mail it, or you can drop it off on our in-person worship on Sunday morning, uh, whatever works best for you. We really appreciate you doing this, and we certainly appreciate your generosity. Uh, don't forget, you can join one of our live uh, Sunday school classes on our Zoom meeting platform. We have four adult classes. Those classes begin at 10.30 uh, this morning. And children and tweens begin at 11.30. The youth are taking a little break uh, as they are getting back into school, and we'll be picking theirs back up very soon. Uh, a number of things are happening in the life of the church that we want you to be aware of. Number one, we do have in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary. And uh, a couple of things you need to know. Well, more than one, too. <clears throat> Masks are required. Please wear them properly. We really need you to cover up your nose when you come in. That helps a lot uh, for us to all be safe. Also, we want you to follow all the other protocols uh, that are in place. It's all designed to keep us safe as we come together to worship our Lord. If you would like to have a nursery for that uh, in-person worship, you must make a reservation. You'll also find the reser reservation form there in the Worship at Wesley uh, part of our website. Our grief group is continuing to meet. They'll be meeting on the 26th at 6 p.m. in the Bible 101 class, following all the safety protocols. We are also making a number of updates to our website, and we're asking all Sunday school teachers, especially our adult leaders, would you go and look at the website, look at the information uh, that's there about your Sunday school class, Call Ramona and work out the details so that we get it correct. August the 30th is a big day, whether it's in person or online or out in the parking lot. We are going to have Promotion Sunday. We'll be mailing your certificates to you. Uh, our, uh, so that's going to happen that way. The backpacks are going to be blessed, and then you're going to be driving through the Portico to receive your uh, uh, tags that we've uh, made, especially for your backpacks. And we're also going to present our third grade, uh, third graders with their Bible. We're going to spread them all out here, and we're going to present their Bibles. And if you can't come or are not able to come, we will get your Bible to you. Uh, uh, as I've said before, a number of things are always changing on our website. Check it out on a regular basis. Go there, see what's happening in the life of our church. Okay, that's enough for me. Let's turn our attention to our audience of one, and let's worship.
Please bow your heads and humble your hearts as we go into the presence of the Father. Holy Father, good morning. It is such a privilege to be here in your presence. God, we have so much to say today, so much to be thankful for. God, we delight in you. You are our refuge and our strength. And today we honor you and we praise you. God, we have so much on our minds right now with the start of school. We have students who have already started back. We have teachers who have already started back and those who are waiting. And these are at the forefront of our mind because we are worried. We've had schools who have started and had to close. And God, we don't want that to happen. So right now we just pray for your protection for each one of us who has called to public education for every student, for every educational staff member. We ask that you would protect them, guide them, be their refuge. God, for each one of us, we have similar worries. We have family members and church members who are ill, who have contracted the virus, who have other health concerns. And God, we ask for your protection for each one of us as well, but also for your healing for those who need it. God, we especially pray and lift up the family of Jordan Heidenrich as they walk alongside him in this journey for healing. We pray for strength for his body and his mind, we pray for healing and wholeness for Jordan. And we continue to lift Randy Hallier to you, Father. We pray for his healing. We pray for his strength and his wholeness and strength for his family. God, there are others here that we lift to you. And right now we silently name them to you. Thank you for your healing, Father. We confess that we've been worried way too much when you've told us not to worry. We confess that we haven't always trusted you 100% but you tell us that you are trustworthy, that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you are always with us and there's nowhere we can go when we are not in your presence. Forgive us, Father, for those times that we have not trusted in you. We pray for your forgiveness for the times that we failed you in so many ways that we've turned our backs on you, that we've just not trusted, that we've been complacent, that we've not shown the love that you've commanded us to show. Father, we pray that you would help us to be the person you want us to be. You've loved us first and we want to love others the way you love us. So show us the way. God, we surrender to you now. We give you our full heart, our whole lives, to be what you called us to. We thank you for this time together that we might worship you in different places, 
but with one heart and one spirit. We thank you for this time that our focus would be on you and that you would recharge us and give us your light because you are the light of the world. You give us life and we thank you, Father. And now as we worship you as one body, we come together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please receive this offering of music as we are mindful of our giving back to God. and girls. I'm so happy to be here this morning. I wanted to talk to you about um, all the miracles that Jesus has performed. We've talked about it for the past several weeks that he's performed many miracles, but do you think he can heal someone without them being in front of them? He can. Let me tell you all about it. One day, Jesus went to a city called Capernaum. There was a very important man that approached him, and he was a centurion. Now, a centurion is a Roman soldier who was over a hundred other soldiers. The centurion told Jesus that his servant was sick and couldn't move, and he asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus said, sure, let's heal him. But the man told Jesus, I am not worthy for you to come to my house. I know that when you tell people they are healed, they are healed. 
I know you can just say the word. He said, in my work, when I tell the soldiers to do something, they do it. So I know when you command something to be done, it is done. Jesus was amazed by what the man had said. Jesus told the people that were following him that this man has a lot of faith. And I haven't found many people in all of Israel who believe in me as much as this man does. He turned to the centurion and he said, go. And his servant was healed immediately. That's big faith, guys. Jesus says that even if our faith is as small as a mustard seed, that we can move mountains. Let's believe and trust in Jesus today. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you that you are still in the healing business today. Father, help us to trust and believe in you always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, uh, beginning in the 17th chapter uh, and the 14th verse. Hear then these words from Matthew. And when they came to the crowd, a man came to him and knelt before him and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He is an epileptic and he suffers terribly and often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples And they could not cure him. And Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. And then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I tell you, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing would be impossible to you. The gospel of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Thanks be to God. Last week, We focused on the passion of doubt, and we spoke just a little bit about the virtue of faith. And so today, I want us to focus in a lot more on our faith and all that it entails. Unfortunately, we often take our faith for granted. We seem to just assume that if we have faith, merely by wanting to have it, then we will. But is that what faith really is? Is faith something we simply think about and so we have it? I don't know about you, but this seems to me to lead us to magical thinking, or worse yet, self-delusion. Is it really true that having the intention to have faith is faith itself? Hmm. Now, we live in a time where there are whole groups of Christian believers who speak of faith as a means to live a more comfortable life. They are fond of saying that if you have enough faith, you will receive more and more blessings, especially if you give a little bit more, you're going to have a whole lot more blessings. And then there are Others, even non-Christians, who use the idea of faith to justify horrible acts of violence all in the name of their faith. Can you say 9-11? And still countless others say that they have faith, but their lives aren't any different from those who claim to have no faith at all. So what gives? In today's scripture lesson, The Lord said that the disciples were unable to heal the boy because of their little faith. And so what does it mean to have faith? As you might imagine, I want to approach this whole idea from a different angle of vision. So let's see what faith is not. 
First of all, faith is not the same as belief. Belief comes wrapped in words, mental concepts, and creeds, and uh, and as valuable as those might be, they have little or nothing to do with faith. Faith is not about propositions at all. It's not about concepts, it's not about words, nor anything that we can or cannot do. Faith is not mental gymnastics. Faith is not achieved by working hard to convince ourselves of something beyond all doubt. In fact, faith is not a mental process at all. And thus, the union we seek with God is not the result of any of our efforts or even our deepest contemplation. Rather, it comes as a result of the coming of Jesus Christ into our world. In other words, what we seek is already within us. Everything from start to finish is a gift from the all-compassionate God who comes to us and lives within us. And so, to talk about faith properly, we need to remember that Christianity begins speaking about God with this concept in mind. Listen carefully. God is fundamentally, mentally unintelligible. You can't get there with your brain. In other words, he dwells in unapproachable light, and we can neither see nor feel nor know him with our minds. God is almighty, but he is much more almighty than we could ever imagine in our wildest imaginations. And there it is, because it is our wildest dreams, our wildest imaginations that are the stuff of faith rather than belief. You see, belief tries to box God up, but it is faith that breaks the box open. Faith is what comes from an encounter with the living God beyond words and beyond human concepts. It is the result of a face-to-face, heart-to-heart encounter with the living God that can never be adequately explained with any words. We don't have the vocabulary. What we must realize is that even faith itself is a gift given by God to those who have purified their hearts, to those who have learned how to sit at the feet of the Lord in silence and who practice moment by moment, day by day, month after month, year after year, the constant remembrance of his holy presence. Faith is a return to the truth of who we are as human beings created in the image and according to the likeness of God. Faith is the rising up within us of the rivers of living water that Christ promised to those who acquire the Holy Spirit. And thus faith is released in us from the depths of our souls when we have taken out the garbage that obstructs the image and lets go of everything that is unhelpful unloving and unhealthy, which, by the way, is why the disciples could not heal the boy. It was because they still had something in the way before the Spirit could move through them without any kind of hindrance. This is why Jesus gently rebukes them in order to humble them, and it's also why we are so much like them. I don't know about you, but I keep trying to imagine the scene as those disciples were trying to cure the boy. I wondered what methodology they were employing, and it made me think of another common occurrence in our time. Those of you who are acquainted with the big business of tele-evangelism have no doubt seen some of the crazy tactics that some evangelists use. I once heard of a certain tele-evangelist who used many gimmicks, and one of them, I kid you not, was a holy shower cap. It was white, and it had a red handprint of the evangelist on it, and his instruction to his followers was to put the cap on and to shower in it, no joke, 
put the cap back in the self-addressed stamped envelope with a nice donation, of course, and upon return, the evangelist would put on the cap and he would pray the prayer of faith and miracles would start flowing down in your life, or so he claimed. Now, I don't know if miracles actually happen because of those shower caps, but I do know that he made thousands and thousands of dollars convincing gullible people that miracles were going to happen if they just had more faith. But faith is not something and has nothing to do with gimmicks. It's not something that has anything to do with shower caps. It's not something that has anything to do with money. It's not even something that has anything to do with miracles. Faith embraces God himself as an, uh, in an unmediated way, demanding and asking nothing except to see and experience the wonder of his presence, which means that even miracles are a distraction from the one necessary thing which is to sit at his feet, to feed on his word, and to bask silently in his silence. Many of the earliest Christians would say that if you have a vision during prayer, ignore it and return to prayer, for it is the one necessary thing. Faith rests in the God who at all times is everywhere present and filling all things and is content to be alone with him and to love him. That's what faith is. True faith simply knows that the goodness of our Lord overflows at all times to all creation, whether times are good or bad or happy or sad. To live is Christ and to die is gain, wrote Paul. And thus Christ is all we need. He is faith. And so the question before us today is simple. Do you have faith? It's easy to say yes, but it would probably be better to stop and really examine the nature of what you think faith really is. If you do that, perhaps in your prayer time today, then maybe you will see what Jesus had in mind, not only for his disciples so long ago, but for each and every one of us here today. Because your faith, actually his faith in you, is meant to both reveal your real purpose and to give you the strength to see that purpose all the way through to the end. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me ask you one other question. How do we know if we have faith? Good question. How do we know if we have faith? Well, the one sure sign that faith is at work in a person's life is not necessarily miracles. Rather, it is love and humility. If those two sure signs of faith are present, then a variety of miracles are already occurring and only the eyes of faith can see them. And so my prayer for each of us here today is this. May love and humility fill our lives so that the living Lord may give to us the amazing gift of faith so that we too might walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Glory to God. Let us pray. Our dear loving and living Lord, who is everywhere present and filling all things, who is the almighty God and beyond anything that we can imagine, allow us to come into your holy presence this morning by faith that we may sit in silence and be overwhelmed by your presence. Forgive us for trying to put you in a box with our many religious concepts. Help us to see that you cannot be contained and that you want to give us this amazing gift, this gift of faith. Help us to see that faith, when we simply are in your presence, help us to remove all the hindrances and obstacles that prevent us from approaching you, and that keep the spirit blocked and unable to work in our lives. 
Ultimately, dear Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your love and your humility, that we might recognize your gift of faith, that we might see the miracles that you are doing all around us all the time. Give us the eyes of faith that we too might walk by faith and not by sight. All this we ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Would you join us as we close with more praises to God? Remember this, the gift of God is the gift of faith, and you are sent in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Carry that gift of faith with you into this glorious day and live in God's peace. Precious.